Guatemala is a country with an extraordinary natural landscape, mild weather, and a great culture going back thousands of years. We are the privileged heirs of two architectural traditions of great symbolism, one built by the Maya and the other brought out by the Spaniards. Our country is famous for the Spanish colonial capital city known today as Antigua, Guatemala, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This town is popular to the visitors and locals alike because of its walkability and beautiful architecture. We have great vernacular architecture as well that we can see in the indigenous towns of the countryside of Guatemala highlands, as well as some neoclassical architecture in the historical Guatemala, Guatemala City, Guatemala de la Asunción, the current capital. Unfortunately, Guatemala has become a chaotic metropolis, product of the 20th century sprawl and lack of long-term planning and infrastructure. If we think of cities as living organisms, we can understand that as such, cities can get sick too. They become ill due to poor urban planning and poor quality of construction. The sense of impermanence, the lack of ideal purpose of which to live together, and the fragmentation of its parts that strip the whole senselessly. Little by little, we are losing, losing the sense of what a city is, as well as the connection to a particular environment and cultural identity. We think there is hope. Sometimes the graffiti guys on the street send inspiring and powerful messages this one reads, without poetry, there's no city. We are fighting back right now to recover the different layers that are required for a true city. After 30 years, we can see the construction of a new development in Guatemala one that is based on an analysis of our urban heritage and history, giving continuity to our present and our future. The land is owned by a, by a family of Guatemala, and it was left undeveloped for, for many years. So it really become, became this jewel piece of land that uh, were to be developed on the 2000s. They had already plans for the land to do the, the, the usual big towers and, and senseless development. But we convinced them to have, a, to have a traditional way approach. So you see the historic center of Guatemala and Cayala, and you see this, this green spot that is, that is really the, the oldest sprawl of the city has surrounded it. On 2003, uh, we convinced them to bring uh, Leon Creer to work with us and to produce a master plan that is the one uh, you see on the left. Um, we took the, the existing infrastructure and, and as he planned it, um, this was just conceived as one of the borders of the development as well as the natural ravines that were surrounding the sites, they were conceived as, as the edges. A series, a seri a spine con of connection that uh, becomes like the main street was the main way of connecting all of these new urban quarters that are, that are devised in all of the land, nine of them. It was decided that the main, that the main uh, quarter will be the Paseo Caela, that is the one shown there. And um, this just started in 2003. As we planned it, we, we had many layers to take care of. 
One of it is, of course, the, the modern way of life of all of these parking requirement that, that is needed. So we provided all of the parking below the main street. And uh, so people has a choice so to drive through the town or go directly to the underground parking and emerge in these um, in these gates that can that that are really like uh, based on the Beaux Art uh, gates to the subway of, of New York. Uh, one of the important aspects also is this idea of the shared space. The shared space is not providing too many signage for the cars. Instead, pedestrians and, and cars share the space. And uh, as you drive, you really become aware of that there is pedestrians. There is more a pedestrian area than, than the place for cars. So they slow down without a problem. And it, it's been working really fine, this, this idea. There is these two main phases. The, pro, the project really went really fast. The construction was uh, of this paseo, the main street that you see, is, is only in two years. Phase one is 2010 in, in blue, and phase two in green is 2011. That covers most of, of uh, the big development that you see today. Uh, we did some, some of scale with, with the Central Park of New York, so you have the idea of the, of the size of the, of the town. Well, Central Park is really huge, and, and you see, <laughs> but uh, it's four kilometers, the whole thing. We had to also try the, just to do the town center in the middle of the park. <laughs> so this is also a comparison with, uh, with the blocks of New York, and also the blocks of Antigua, Guatemala, which is uh, almost 100 meters square. You see that the blocks of Kaila are really small blocks and incremental. So they are really making these streets alive. There is a few elements as, as these layers that I mentioned that are conceived for the town. And one of it is, is to have these public buildings, these public buildings that serve as a reference and uh, are provided to, to become and enhance the most important public places of the town. This one is, uh, is the Market Hall and Tower, uh, which is designed by Leon Creer. And it's supposed to be the most important landmark of the, of the town, welcoming the people right on the entrance. Richard Economakis also helped us in this project and um, in his conception of the, of the town hall in the middle of the town, uh, he took some ideas of, of the Guatemala and this is, for example, the Church of Santa Tomas with the big steps that is more like a Mayan tradition to put the temples on the, on the top and um, put in this, this new building that was supposed to be the, the civic hall on top. He also took the idea of, of the arcades and shops of Antigua and, um, and to put the civic hall on top. Some of the character of the windows is based on Antigua Guatemala as well, and also the corner windows that you see in the image are also part of the Antigua tradition. So it was it's very important to take some precedents from our, our legacy in, in architecture and, and towns. So these are the three civic buildings. And, and the one uh, uh, Asaria building, the civic hall, was built from the very beginning, which is a very clear statement of, of what a public building can really do the sense of place that, that we want. It, it become a reference to the city and to the spaces along it. And, uh, and then at the, at the end, which is really the center of the, the Paseo Cayala, 
y, y Santa María, reina de la familia. This, in fact, is for me the most important layer that we are adding to the town, the sacred layer. It was really a very used the idea to have the cross mark in the middle of the towns and that signalizing what is important to the town. We are able to do this in Kaela and to have like the, the, the church as in the center of the city and really bringing the community together, which is one of the important aspects that these buildings do even now that it's just the, the, the first chapel that is built right now, is already bringing a lot of this community and, and it's uh, all around the Zone 16 where Kaela is located. So you see uh, it is also designed with the elements to be really focal point from the entrance to the city and um, the elaboration of the architecture, of course, is to do with being the most important building. The buildings that are created to Kaela are to be a sequence that can be read really one after the other. And the windows, even there are many different windows, they relate to each, each other. And each building, one next to the other, relates to the, the first, and, and so on. And so it's, it's more like a conception of, of to have the, um, the buildings become like uh, to design the facades of the street rather than just the facades of, of the building. There is also a scale to, a scale to, to the uh, single family homes in part of, it, of the town. Now I'm going to show you some pictures through the main street, but of course you are welcome to come to Guatemala and experience it yourself. So you see, this is the impact of the, of the town hall, right in the entrance, that you see it's, uh, it's really powerful and giving this sense of place. This was just the first, um, the first phase. So the, all of this has commercial on the first floor, and these arcades are continuous along the main street and uh, providing shops and, and work for all of, a lot of the people of, of the area. The, the developer uh, remain in control with all of these buildings that, that front the main street, and um, he's selling behind the blocks that are behind the, the the next layer of buildings that you can see. You can see the bell tower that is right in the middle there, and it's um, signalizing the way to the main, the main um, square. Right now it's just the campanile that is, that is built, but it's already giving its presence. You see on the design of the church, and this is the main square on top, we have a, a cinema, a cinema that has eight movie theaters and is working wonderfully. So this idea of having everything together in one place is, is the idea of, of building a community that, that you can go to the movies, then you can go to mass, you can shop your clothing and, and enjoy a restaurant. This is really wonderful and we have been fortunate to, to see it being working right now. These are some of the numbers, these 2017 hectares. It has an ecological park on the ravines. Um, the town center is 44 hectares. The construction until um, 2011, it was 52,000 meters, square meters. And um, for 2000, 16, we will have 200,018 square meters. It's about 30% of the, the 
land built already. There is parking spaces like 2,000 right now on the ground and also uh, surface parking that is, that is done. Um, the prices have ri risen a little bit, but we are really in a continuous effort to do different sets of, of units, of residential units that can accommodate different incomes to a place. Right now it's, it's hard because it's, this part has been uh, rising the prices really fast. There is concerts, I mean, uh, also um, because of the place it is, it has attracted a lot of concerts and, and a lot of activity to the place. Like a, a concert that, that went like for 80,000 people and, and it's, it's been a reference to the Guatemala City. This is an aerial view, a very recent aerial view, and uh, these are some buildings that are going to, to come. This part in particular is, is based somewhat of a, in the Palacitos of or Palazzine the, of Rome. This, these really small buildings that are providing for spaces. And it has uh, shops on below, and it will have uh, residential and offices on top, and even a uh, even, uh, boutique hotel are, is coming to, to this part. Thank you, and now Maria will continue with the presentation. Man's distinguishing attribute is reason, and using it, it managed to protect himself from the elements. Beyond this, he developed construction into a high art, architecture. Man is by nature the manufacturer of its own world. He constantly challenged his own intellect, striving to surpass past achievements and thus creating incredible works. And the city is the most complex artifact designed by men. In this quest, however, only those who observe and understand the laws of nature can achieve a balance between nature and the artifice they create. The principles derived from the study of nature have generated a consistent way of building. And the continuity of this knowledge of the craft of building has become the architectural tradition. Briefly said, Kaya La reflects the essence of the traditional city. As Leon Krier recently said, we are building an open city for an open society. We, re re we reconnect to the living heritage of Athens, of Rome, of Republican, Imperial, and Christian Rome, the model which is now sought after in all continents. Kayala is a town for the successful middle classes and yet judging from the daily visitors, it is an attraction to all, independent of income, of class, age, religion, sex, or race. Kayala is becoming an emblematic model for the rebirth of Guatemalan urban life and culture. This town is a tribute to the civilizing power of good architecture and urban planning. Kayala offers an alternative that is clearly better than the isolated buildings and developments that, like strangers, do not engage in dialogue. Kayala proposes the use of one architectural language, clear and consistent, to connect with our environment and connect with our own humanity, that is, to connect our body, our mind, our soul. Besides promoting physical health by being pedestrian city, the town feeds our minds and our social nature through the creation of public spaces, such as squares and streets. It creates places that function as real meeting points between neighbors and friends that start acting like an extended family. One of the goals of the project is to create a place that promotes artistic beauty, which feeds our soul and generates great pride in our built environment. What is most interesting about this 
new city is that it breaks up with the intellectual, commercial, and construction format that has dominated our country for over 60 years. It proposes to eliminate existing chaos through order, civil, architectural, and urban order. We propose to bring formality back and leave aside the impulsive improvisation that we have seen in recent decades. To do this, urban planning and the, and the in depth study of our architectural identity are very important. The architectural team studied historic towns and buildings' precedents around Guatemala and Central America, including Spanish colonial and Mayan examples. The new town of Cayala is a gateway and an inspiration regaining our identity as a culture. The new town of Cayala is a physical proof that traditional architecture and urbanism can bring us closer to the ideals of order, courtesy, respect, peace, freedom. And the contemplation of beauty we propose is like an open gate through heaven from earth. We propose a place that feeds our soul and creates great pride in our, in our built environment through its beauty. Engaging in contemplation, we raise our spirit to a vision that trans transcends our daily life. This appeases violence and insecurity and provides a buffer zone against chaos. It gives us hope and confidence that we can strive to live a life of dignity and prosperity, a more responsible, more peaceful, more meaningful life. It has been a very complex process with some intellectual resistance, but it is the beginning and it has shown very significant results. And it is required great courage from the entire team of people who have believed in it and work on this project. From the landowners, developers, designers, consultants, builders, and artisans to the sellers of the final product, as well as the people who dare to make the big change in their lifestyle and more, and move here. Construction has focused first on the creation of public spaces and commercial streets which generate activity and make the development attractive for potential residents. Man's decisions are reflected in his building and cities. These are physical manifestations of history. The city is the physical manifestation of who we are, what we think, what we believe. Plateau tells us that the city is man read and large. Every street, square, and building reflects the values and principles of the citizens who live in it. And Aristotle explains that man is a society of free men who meet in order to live a virtuous life. And the reward of this life is happiness. Kayala is today a powerful tool that can change the rules of the game in our society. Our goal with the new town of Kayala is to shed light on the way forward, to offer an alternative that will take more than a generation to develop, support, love, and embrace as our own, to be successful in its entirety. The success of the project is measurable in its social life, you can see here several examples of daily life that can be really enjoyed as dancing just in the middle of the town if there is good music in the background. And it's also measured by the plethora of public events that have been happening, as sports, concerts, and festivals that are regularly staged in Kayala's outdoor spaces and public buildings. 
Although it is only six years old and still under construction, Kaya Lan now features in national adverts and promotionals as a destination for visitors to Guatemala. Its popularity is due largely to the, its adoption of the traditional urban model and architectural expressions of Guatemala. We are a group that listens to the spirit of the place rather than the spirit of time. We are able to tap into the vast tradition of classical architecture without prejudice. In Guatemala, our goal is to recover the identity of its regional architecture, which draws inspiration from the incredible diversity of topography, social and ethnic groups, climate, and the legacies of mo both Mayan tradition and Spanish colonial tradition. Cayala is a new urban model, and the church, Santa Maria, Reina de la Familia, is its heart. We think that after so many years, we have managed to build again a place that connects with our heart, a place that conveys a story of meaning and belonging in which our Guatemalan identity can be celebrated and preserved. We are then very fortunate to live in this time because we are experiences, experiencing the renaissance of the traditional city in Guatemala, and it is wonderful. We can say with certainty that Kayala is a new hope for a new society. Thank you very much.